Hey everybody, I wanted to go ahead and learn to use ZBrush, and I wanted to use it to create game assets. But I couldn't find very many tutorials about it, and most of the tutorials I found were like 10 years old. So, I'm going to teach you how I did it. I eventually figured every step out, and I'm going to teach you how to go from absolute newbie in ZBrush to exporting high-quality optimized assets into Unity, or Unreal Engine. We're going to be starting from absolute scratch, because that's where I was a week ago. And we're going to be um, learning a lot about the workflow in ZBrush as well as the export tools. I'm going to be using a tablet and a, key and a pen. If you do not have one, you can obviously use a mouse, but that's not got any pressure sensitivity, so you might have a hard time modeling stuff. I'm also using ZBrush, not ZBrush Core. I think they have the same features for this, but I'm not sure. Also, it's really cold. So you'll hear the heat turn on a lot. <laughs> this is the Lightbox. It's basically just the version of the browser, uh, the, the file browser that you might get in, in another system. All of these gray objects are meshes. The ones that are weird colors probably aren't meshes. You can learn about those somewhere else. We're not going to be teaching you how to model using Z-spheres or anything like that. I'm going to be focusing entirely on modeling meshes, and the reason for that is because there is a workflow in ZBrush that is quite strange, and uh, it's good to understand how to do that before you try and use any of the more advanced features. Just pick a sphere, doesn't really matter which one. Double-click it, and you'll load it up. So, how do you get around in ZBrush? Well, there are a couple of things to do. Uh, when you right-click, you move the, the camera around your model like this. You want to get used to right-clicking on the model if possible. Um, if you right-click off of the model, it's going to use wherever you last were tap tapping on your model as the center, and that can get really confusing, especially if you suddenly pass in front of the model and it changes where it's focused. So I recommend getting used to tapping on the model to do this. Control right click will zoom in and out. Alt right click will move it around. Uh, that's all very, very basic stuff. If you get lost, you can always tap the frame button and it will put this center frame. No biggie, right? So that's really the only thing you need to know about getting around. Right click, sorry, right click, control right click, and alt right click. Shift right click will snap you and you can do that with the others. So if you're rotating, you can shift while you're rotating and it will snap you to a, a given orientation. Keep in mind that this is not Blender, and the orientations can get funky. So, for example, right now I'm looking at the side with it laying down. You can tell by the orientation plane, and that's really not what I want, and it's kind of annoying. Um, I haven't found a way to snap to a particular orientation, like in Blender you can hit one. haven't figured out how to do that here in, um, here in ZBrush, but once you get used to how to work in ZBrush, it's not too hard. Navigating around ZBrush aside, we're going to be focusing entirely on edit mode. Um, we're going to only be switching out of edit mode very, very rarely, if ever, and there's a reason for that. When you switch out of edit mode, you have to learn to use ZBrush's tool and subtool system in a way which I don't think is very easy to figure out. So up here in the corner where it says edit, you're going to want to keep that button turned on unless you're doing something that you actually know how to do. Uh, that's a different topic, and you can figure that out later. Uh, for now, we're going to keep it in edit mode, and if you screw up, then uh, chances are you're going to get very annoyed if you're outside of edit mode because uh, it does weird things. So, how do you actually model here in ZBrush? Well, I really recommend that you get used to using keyboard shortcuts for everything, because clicking actually is um, prone to causing problems when you click and you slightly miss, or you click and you drag in a weird way. For example, if you're trying to choose, choose a new brush and you click up here to choose a brush and then you move your mouse and suddenly, oh, well, now the brushes are gone. Click, move, oh, click, move, oh, okay, now it's working. To avoid that, just hit B to pull up the brush menu. Now you've got a bunch of brushes de selected by default and they're not very good. They're not the brushes anybody uses except for Clay Buildup. Clay Buildup is great. Uh, but we're going to switch right away to the move brush, which you can do by hitting M and then by hitting V or by selecting it. 
we already started it as a move brush because this is take two, but uh, the move brush is a very useful brush for dragging out your model in various ways, and it's absolutely critical for um, uh, for getting the basic shape of your model. Uh, now I have symmetry turned on. You can turn it on and off by hitting X. So you can see how the other dot turns on and off. Also, I have a nice big move brush. Hit S to change the size of the move brush. So we've got B for brush, X for symmetry, and S for size. X for X axis symmetry, in case you're wondering. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to go ahead and model ourselves a really generic game asset. Um, how about some kind of uh, statue, right? So we'll pull up the top here into this kind of silly looking hat and then we will go ahead and try and figure out what we want this to, to be because uh, I'm just creating something arbitrarily. Maybe we'll make it like an angel, uh, an angel statue. That sounds pretty straightforward, right? So uh, this obviously doesn't look much like an angel statue right now, and I'm going to teach you one more thing before we move into modeling proper, because there are a lot of elements that can bite you if you're not familiar with them. This button here is pretty handy. It shows you the density of your mesh. It shows you the wireframe of your mesh. And you can see that down here, it's really, really dense. So uh, we have this high, high density area down here. But then it stretches out and it becomes less and less and less dense. And this is just because we're stretching out the model when we use the move brush. The good news is we can fix that. Just hold control and drag a box while you're not on the mesh. That will use the DynaMesh feature and it will automatically remesh your model. That's super, super handy and you should do it whenever you think your model uh, needs it. Um, so we'll just go ahead and uh, zoom out turn off that visual just because it's hard to model with that visual on. We're also going to turn on polish. So here in geometry in the sidebar, this is where the DynaMesh is. It starts as on, so you don't have to do anything. But I really like polishing. I think that game assets look better when they have a little bit of crisp edge to them. So I'm going to leave polishing on. We're going to switch to a couple of other brushes, though. We're not going to stick just with move. The next brush you're going to need, and you're going to need a lot of it, is the inflate brush. So you can hit I and then pick it, or you can hit I N. All of the four main brushes that I use are pretty easy to click on uh, with your keyboard shortcuts. So, you know, I, I use them a lot. Uh, and it's set way too big, so we're gonna bring it way down here. And we're basically just gonna create like a little, a little plinthy type thing where the statue can rest on it. Um, we can later on do a lot more work with that. Uh, for example, we could switch over to an insert brush and actually create a proper disc for our, our asset. But again, I don't want to teach you how to do that stuff. There's plenty of tutorials on how to do that. So we're just going to rough it up using this and maybe the flatten brush later on. Um, uh, in fact, what I may do is start with a box. Can I start with a box? I could, but it would require me to do something else. So I'm not going to, in the end, I'm not going to. We're going to go ahead and uh, keep modeling right the way we are. Oh, I just reset it, didn't I? Great. So what I just did is I missed with my click, and I ended up rewinding all the way to the beginning of, of this. And you might be very confused. Like, what the heck? How did that happen? This. This is the undo menu, and it is the timeline. And it is really badly placed, such that if you misclick on anything ever, you're going to end up rewinding to the beginning of time. So just keep in mind that that exists, and, uh, you know, fix it as you need to. So what we need to do is create something that looks a little bit angelic, and that means we're going to want to pull out some wings, right? Well, how do we do that? Well, we're going to switch back to the move brush by hitting B and then tapping move because it's in our Q menu now, and we're going to go and learn how to mask. If you hold control and you tap, you'll draw a mask. Now, this is not something that normally I use very much in other engines. Masks are generally, like, fiddly. But in ZBrush, you're going to want to use masks for everything. You're going to want to use them a lot. Um, learn how to use masks and get used to them. So you control and drag to draw a mask. You can tap on the control and tap on the model to smooth the mask. You can see how the edges are getting smoother and smoother and smoother. You can control and tap off of the model to invert the mask. This isn't very complicated once you get used to it, and it lets you do some amazingly cool things. <laughs> Now, to clear a mask, you control and then drag a box off of the object. This is all very basic stuff, but keep in mind that that's also how you remesh. 
So you can't remesh while you have a mas mask active if you do it this way. Um, just so you're aware, there are some overloaded elements to it. Anyway, let's go ahead and draw ourselves a little mask. We're going to draw drop down the draw size a little bit. And you can control alt or control alt to erase masks, uh, just so you're aware. So we're going to invert that mask and then we're going to use the move with a nice big, sorry, with a nice big brush size and we're going to pull out some wings. And you can see how these wings are super low poly at the moment. They they don't have very much density to them at all. So we're going to go ahead and remesh. And you can see that with the smoothing turned on, we get this crisp edge here, and that's kind of what I want. So, yay. Once again, I want to pull out a wing shape. You can see how I'm pulling too much wing. What we're going to do is just mask the top of the wing. Pretty easy, right? There we are. Now we got some wing shapes. Clear the mask and remesh. So now we have something that's starting to look a little bit angelic, but we don't have any features or anything. Well, once you got the very rough shape going, you can start to model more features into it by using other brushes. The recommended brush for a lot of this is the clay buildup brush, which is the one of the default brushes you start up. You can also get it by hitting C and then B for buildup. And you notice that's very easy to hit B, C, B, brush, switch, switch to brush to clay buildup. So uh, the four brushes that I use are all very easy to click on the keyboard, which is happy, uh, which is good. Um, so when you use clay buildup, you get this sort of uh, basic setup where you can model whatever you need to do like this. And it's obviously a very rough shape, but that's fine. We don't need any sort of complexity to our shapes yet, uh, any sort of smoothness to our shapes yet. We just want the, the basic idea. If you hold Alt, you'll end up subtracting, and that's obviously just as important, so get used to that as well. And so we can come up with this sort of um, model. Uh, let's go ahead and just model in some basic um, angel features, right? So we'll get ourselves a, a, a portly little angel. We'll just rough out the basic shape like this. And uh, that's just a basic setup. You just do clay build up until you have the right shape. And don't worry if it looks crumbly, like it's like far too rough and gritty. Um, there are a lot of ways to fix that. Obviously, one of the easiest ways to fix it is to just hold shift and smooth it all out. But you can also do things like do an overall shift, um, uh, an overall smoothing operation and stuff like that. We don't really need to do that right now. We're just going to shift to smooth it out a little bit. And then we're going to remesh it. Um, and now we've got a little bit of an, ang an angelic sort of look, uh, and we can continue to polish this as much as we want. I'm not going to spend too much time on it just because this is not supposed to be uh, a, a show where you watch me model something. I just want to show you how easy it is, right? Um, this is not a difficult process. Uh, it is difficult in that you have to know what you want, though. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to model it um, without any sort of sense of the... 3D mass of your object. So that's just a modeling thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can do whatever you need to do in order to make this work. Uh, the clay buildup brush is really, really excellent. And I think you'll find that almost every tutorial says that <laughs> um, because it's by far their best brush in terms of roughing out modeling. So there is our little angel feature. Um, we can actually like use prints on the wings. Uh, you, there are like um, stamps and stuff that you can use, but we're just gonna go ahead and rough it like this, uh, just because it's not something, I don't want to teach you the complicated modeling features. You can learn those pretty well from another tutorial. Uh, we're just gonna want to rough it up nice and fast uh, like this. There we go. Now we've got our angel, right? And that's pretty basic. Uh, what we can do is to tighten this up a little bit. We'll want to use masks, right? So for example, we can create an eye mask, soften it, invert it, and then use the clay buildup brush in reverse to uh, hollow out some eye holes. And then you get rid of that mask, and then we can paint the nose uh, with a mask and soften it and then invert it, and then use clay buildup brush positive to build that nose. And that way you don't have any risks of accidentally um, building up parts of the face that you don't want to build up. And then you smooth that until it looks like you want it to look. Just so that it looks like it's a person and not 
a horrifying um, monster with a wig, right? Just just a little bit. And there's our poor little angel. So the other brush you're probably going to want to use a lot of is the Dam Standard brush, which is Brush Dam Standard DS. Uh, this is a really, really powerful brush uh, for detail modeling because it creates these creases when you draw it. It is a little bit annoying in that it's inverted from all of the other brushes. Um, when you just draw normally, it creates uh, a crease, a dip, and then Alt actually creates uh, an upward rise. And that's backwards from what you might be used to from every other brush, so just keep that in mind. Um, you can invert it if you'd like. It's as easy as just changing it up here. But uh, since the saves, since the brush changes don't save quite as easily as you might think, it's probably better just to get used to it the way everybody uses it, which is the default. We're going to use a damn standard brush just to cut a little bit of the baseline into action here. Uh, and then we're going to switch back to the uh, clay buildup brush and just put in little feetsies. There you go. So there we have our angel. Um, obviously, it's not a very interesting angel, but we're going to be exporting this into Unity as a very, very high quality export. Um, and it's going to have a very, very low poly count. And we're going to do that in the next episode.